Welcome. I'm Doug Smith from uh, Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative, and uh, this is the Exceptional Educators Playbook. Today I'm being assisted by Ms. Chastity Kraft, a literacy consultant from uh, Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative. The purpose of this podcast is to offer professional learning opportunities while giving teachers a platform to share their expertise. Every month we will highlight a different topic every educator needs to know. This month we're focusing on progress monitoring. Uh, we will discuss behavior modification strategies and progress monitoring tools to use with your students. You'll have the opportunity to share your successes, ideals, and questions so we can all learn from each other. And uh, any comments, questions, or anything like that, please use the chat function and uh, Ms. Chastity will uh, keep us uh, uh, up to date on the, the things in the chat. Today we'll be discussing how to progress monitor behavior goals. Uh, we're excited to have with us a guest speaker, Ms. Tiffany Perkins from uh, Hyman Elementary in Knott County, uh, virtually of course, and she'll share some behavioral strategies and how she's progress monitoring and uh, documenting her efforts for the students, uh, which is a very important step in progress monitoring is the documentation. We'll also be answering any questions that you may have and uh, please uh, drop any questions or comments in the chat box at any time. Uh, so first off, let's go ahead and get started with uh, what is progress monitoring? Progress monitoring is frequent ongoing assessment of students' progress toward the goals of an intervention, or progress monitoring is uh, documenting changes that you may have to make in a student's IEP based on the data that you've collected. So progress monitoring is critical to determine whether the services and supports outlined in the IEP are providing adequate uh, uh, ex a benefit to the student in the educational process. So basically progress monitoring is keep track of what your, the goals and what you've implemented to try to uh, have a positive outcome on those goals and uh, see if there's any adjustments or modifications that need to be made. And usually weekly I think is a good goal to try to get a data point weekly for your progress monitoring. Yeah, and I would imagine that would depend a lot on what the goal is. And, that is true. And that is so, very true. So especially with even me, again, me thinking of literacy with the behavior, yeah. it could even be daily or like you said, depending on what you want to do. So it can be. And if you're using a, using the, like, for instance, if you're using check in and check out and you've got a daily progress report or, or school card, whatever you want to call it, then that could be daily uh, data that you keep. And in order to see, you know, if there's any patterns, you know, as Wednesday a bad day, uh, or Monday's rough mornings for little Dougie, you know, things like that. So I think just uh, daily for some behaviors, uh, and then, uh, like you said, it would determine on your district's policy and also on what you as the IEP team or ARC uh, team de 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 decides when is a good time to progress monitor and how often. So why do we want to progress monitor? So the uh, primary benefit of progress monitoring is to make sure that you have data that's backing up uh, your, as evidence, if the student's meeting progress toward their goal. So, and it's also necessary to use progress monitoring information to determine if the modifications or the interventions or the strategies, that strategies, easy for me to say, <laughs> strategies that you're using are having an impact on that goal, or do you, are they making uh, adequate progress, or making too much progress, or, or, or do you need to change uh, the goal altogether or the tool that you're using to, uh, to monitor the data? And it's also a way to, uh, progress monitoring is a way to let the parents, the student, staff, the student, and the parents know uh, if the kid's making progress toward their goal and their IEP goals. So the ultimate goal of progress monitoring is to increase student outcomes and to better inform instruction. So. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what Ms. Tiffany's got for us today. So Ms. Tiffany, tell us a little bit about the, the your school district and uh, what kind of uh, instruction or I guess, how y'all are doing that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are, we have been using the hybrid model where we have, uh, Students that have been coming in person, but also if the parents chose, they can um, be learning virtually as well. We did that, we began last week, and so we completed a full week, and then starting today, we're back to virtual. Yeah, and I'd imagine uh, uh, that'll be the, 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 the situation 
throughout their school year. You, you might be in person some and then virtually some. So I guess it just depends on on the, the impact that the, the pandemic has in, in the York County or whatever. So I think a lot of our school districts have gone back to a, a virtual setting uh, this yeah. week as well. So yeah, yeah. So what are some strategies that you use or how do you progress monitor, say for instance, uh, in, in person, uh, then what are some ways that you progress monitors in the virtual world? Well, what I've found the easiest is to find methods that work both ways, that can reach both of those types of kids. Um, some things that I've, I've used, you know, tracking behavior is, uh, if it's a type of behavior that I need to check the frequency of, I commonly use just a little, a little clicker counter thing uh, that I can just quickly hit the number every time I see the behavior happen. And then I can later transfer that to a spreadsheet that I use. Um, that's one thing. And then another thing I have is a leadership bingo. Uh, I push leadership with my students. I push it hard. And I'm always talking about these are the behaviors that a leader exhibits. And so I created a leadership bingo. And I put that in our Google Classroom um, for others to see. And the way the leadership bingo is, is based on each student's IEP, they each get their own bingo card. And at the top of that bingo card, I have the behaviors that I'm looking for. Not the, not the negative behaviors, but the positive behaviors that I'm looking for. And the students just think it's leadership behaviors. And so they don't realize that I'm tracking their behavior for their IEP. And they take that bingo card and they go to their, their general education classroom and it's set up like your average uh, bingo card, except over on the side, it's got the classroom teacher's names for that student. And if they are in that classroom and they feel like they have exhibited a certain behavior really well during that classroom, they'll go to that classroom teacher at the end of the class and they'll ask that teacher to sign that space. And just like your, any other bingo game, when they horizontally, vertically, um, diagonally anyway when they complete a bingo then they'll come to me and they'll receive a reward and those rewards are based on uh, reinforcement surveys that I've done with the students. Right, cool so yeah and I think it's one of the key things we uh, need to focus on or think about when we're coming up with rewards what's rewarding to the students not what's rewarding to me as a teacher but what do the students find rewarding and I think sometimes we just look at, yeah, I think the kids are like this, but you know, if you don't ask them, then you don't, you don't know. Uh, cool. I like the, I like the bingo, the leadership bingo thing. It's, it's a, a neat idea. So, what are some strategies you're using in the virtual, or with virtually as well? So, is it along the same lines, or? Um, yeah, like um, one thing that I used, and we used last year, and it's working virtually too, is uh, my seventh and eighth grade team. We have a behavior chart, and I've also dropped a copy of that. Um, and, and everything I put in a Google Classroom is editable for everybody to use. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for that. But yeah, like, yeah. just like back when you know kids were in kindergarten and they had the little little up and down chart, um, our chart is color coded, and every day students, either virtually or in person, um, they start on green, they start fresh, and this kind of pushes positive behaviors, but it also has us uh, a way to track those negative behaviors too. And if we see that um, a student is exhibiting good behaviors, then they get to move up one color and then they get to move up another color the next time they exhibit good behaviors. And if they get to the top, which is pink, then they, um, they get a reward. And again, that's tied to what their personal reward would be. And then if they exhibit negative behaviors, then they're going to go down that chart and if they go down to red then that is a parent contact and then off to the side of that chart it I feel like it's important you know because we're in such a hurry throughout the day mm. to keep track and make be able to make notes about what is happening to cause that behavior so it's kind of color coded off to the side of the chart where you can write um, a quick note about what the behavior was and we color code the notes it's red if it's if it's a problem behavior and it's purple if it's a positive behavior or a positive comment. And uh, some of the way, I guess, using that, you could use that same thing with the, 
as far as virtually, if you could have the caregivers or the parents uh, to buy into it and teach them how yeah. to uh, assist in progress monitoring. And I think it's something that we need to think about is how are we going to uh, uh, get our parents on board to help us with our progress monitoring? You know, if it's a simple tool that you can use, teach the parents or the caregivers how to use that tool. And, you know, uh, for instance, with a, I, I guess one thing that you could think about it, even though it's a, more or less a tier two intervention, if you're using check in and check out, which they have a school card or a daily progress report that they take with them, then you could teach the parents how to use that and, you know, how to rate that. And uh, not only could you do that virtually, but the parents or the caregivers could do that at home as well. Uh, also a self-monitoring checklist, you know, uh, did the student, you know, where did the student log on or, or get onto the, the assignment, whatever platform you're using? Did they have their materials? You know, did they uh, pay attention, stay in the classroom? Did they, you know, uh, attempt the classwork? You could have a, a checklist uh, that the, the, those folks could use at home as well. So I, th I think those are just a couple ideas that you could maybe use with them. Uh, with that as far as virtually anything no. nah. yeah. so all right now that you've collected this data and you've done your progress monitoring how do you document the information and what do you do with it if you you know after you've uh, collected the data uh, i have created a behavior log and you know i've got these different tools where i, I collect data on each student like you know the the leadership bingo, I'm collecting data. The behavior chart, I'm collecting, collecting data. I also have another frequency recording method that I use. And, and we use um, a student of the week slideshow to, to exhibit things or show our progress and a star of the week program that we use. But it's all pieces all over the place. At the end of the day, when I'm planning for my next week, when I'm planning for my students' needs, I like to see everything in one snapshot. Hmm. And so, I have a behavior log and I have dropped that in the, the Google Classroom as well. And it just, it's got a space for each student each day of the week and it's a weekly log that I can use. And I've got it to where um, I can just see everything in one picture. And I really, I, I need that so I can better plan for my students. Yeah. Awesome. Um, going back, I was just sitting here, um, thinking about what you said about your uh, seventh and eighth grade team doing the leadership bingo and that star student. So I think that um, is kind of key too when, um, if everybody's on the same page and if you're doing that working with other teachers as well, I'm sure that is more um, beneficial for you and the student having that consistency across the teachers like that. I mean, do you think that's do you see that? I can hear you she's talking, but I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> you got to repeat that? Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can repeat all that or not. She, she's Basically, what I said was uh, bye, you had bye, bye. <laughs> you have, have the team. You said it's not just you doing the star student and the leadership bingo. It's, it's your team that you're working yes. with. So it's you and your regular education teachers, your, your whole seventh and eighth grade team of teachers. So you have that consistency across all teachers for those yes. students. Yes, and our gear at staff is involved too. We we have worked really hard on planning this and you know, making sure we all stay on the same page and communicate with each other because that's ultimately gonna benefit our students more. Right, uh, and I think one, one of the key things that we gotta think about with progress monitoring is the data collection, collecting that data, uh, making sure you assemble it or put it into something that's visually uh, uh, can be seen, uh, such as a graph of some type, and then sharing that information with the staff to help you uh, make decisions on, do I continue this intervention? Do I need to change this intervention? Is little Dougie going to meet his goal? And then you share that information with the staff, because, you know, if, you, if I collect data for you and I turn that in and you don't do anything with it, guess what? I'm not going to do that next time. Sorry about your luck. I'm just going to make something up. But, you know, think about that. <laughs> If it's not used, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so, so, and so let me add to that behavior chart that we use is we use it on Google. And so like we have shared it with each other. Right. So like if a student is in my class and they do something positive or negative and I put it on that chart, then when they go to the next teacher's class, that teacher has it up at their computer and they can already see 
that that student has done something that they shouldn't have or should or you know let's continue bragging on them or whatever the case may be and we all have that on our computers when they come to the classroom so like you said you know the team effort and everybody being in, in the know it's going on because we share that with each other and we keep it active yeah that's awesome that's a behavior momentum you know mm -hmm. if, if i'm doing well keep snowballing that keep bragging on me keep encouraging me uh, and, and that's great. That's uh, that's really cool the way that you do share that information with each other. And like I said, not only sharing it with each other, then you share that information with the student. Hey, you're doing really great. Uh, you know, awesome job today. I really like the way that you're and use that behavior specific praise and and let them know exactly what you like about their day and 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 their behavior. And then also uh, uh, be able to, like you said, share it with the the caregivers, the parents, whatever. That way they know where they stand or where the student, if they're making progress or not. Very good. Speaking of the parents, something that we use to, to communicate with the parents is that it's an app and a website called Class Tag. And um, I've dropped the link for that in the Google Classroom too. And um, you can like send out a, a message to all of your parents at once. Um, you can set it up so that they can receive it through text or email. Um, they can have the app and receive a notification um, and you can individualize you can send individual messages and like you can you can connect them with those behavior um, tools so that they can be in that now right. awesome job great uh, you, you keep talking about the Google classroom or whatever is that what it's called mm -hmm. all right uh, so folks watching or whatever uh, if you you know interested in what's in there please share your resources and information that we've shared and then if you're interested uh, uh just send me a uh, i guess an email how's that work yeah if you're not Techie. if you're not watching <laughs> live you can email doug at doug.smith at hazard.kyschools.us if you are i put um, the class code in the chat box and you can just join by using that code so either way um it's got some phenomenal resources. Tiffany's already referenced several that she's put in there and they're great. So you can have access to those at any time. Just shoot Doug an email and he'll he'll get you in there. Um, one thing I was thinking about Tiffany also, you have mentioned several different, um, you've mentioned the tally counter, the, the leadership bingo and the star student and then all those things. So, um, so you're covering different goals. So, you know, do you care to talk about how, you know, some, you probably do the leadership bingo for all students, but when you have specific yes. goals, how do you tie for the progress monitoring, tie that tool to the goal and make sure that it aligns that you're using, help me answer that question. Like you're, she's using the correct progress to monitoring tool to measure the goal. Right. Yeah. If you want to measure how often a behavior occurs, you would do a frequency uh, count as compared to how long a behavior lasts, then you would use a, 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 a duration recording. Uh, so there's a, you know, you're not going to use a frequency count uh, to count how many times that uh, uh, someone has put their head down. You know, that would be a duration. How long does that behavior last in the classroom where you know, it's every time they bring a pencil or when they raise their hand, you would use a frequency count. And you could do that by, like you said, a tally mark or by paper clips in your pocket, moving them from one pocket to the other, rubber bands on your wrist, moving that from one hand to the other, so forth, so on like that. So uh, what are some examples and ways that you're using those? Blurred outs is is a number one thing that, that we have an issue with in seventh and eighth grade. And, right. and uh, you know, I, I have also dropped in the Google Classroom a form that I use to keep track I either use like the, the clicker that I mentioned earlier or a frequency recording table and um, I found it on Teachers Pay Teachers and it's a whole document with all kinds of different versions but um, I attached the whole the link to the document it's a free document in Teachers Pay Teachers and I believe it's page five of that document that it you can just write your tallies and you can write the target behavior and everything up there and um, I find it really good to, to keep, you know, to tally. Tally is something you can do really quick and it's got it broken down by the day. And um, that has worked really well with me when it comes to recording frequency. And I think Ms. Chastity, you were talking about a, a uh, uh, when you were in the classroom, you used a, just a, a quick 
you had like their goals written on just a post-it note or whatever, and you could quickly tally how many times they did that in that classroom or that behavior occurred. Is that correct? So, yeah. On a clipboard or something. Yeah. Um, you would, it was just something real simple, kind of like, like what you were saying, Tiffany, you just write the goal, <clears throat> whatever the goal was. Um, if they were, um, one in particular, I'm thinking about uh, the child was getting out of his seat. We wanted him to stay in his seat because he was getting out way too many times disrupting the whole class. Um, so uh, we every time he got out of his seat, and um, and I would do a certain amount of time. I, I mean, the class periods were 45 minutes, so uh, I didn't do it for a whole 45 minutes at, at starting out because he did it so often. So I would just take a 10 minute chunk of time and set a timer for 10 minutes, and then just put a mark. It was numbered, and I just wrote a mark through a number how each time he got out of his seat. But then also we had something uh, you could do in appropriate behavior. So you're also, because you uh, learned from Mr. Smith here to do <clears throat> replacement behaviors, you don't just wanna, you wanna replace the inappropriate with an appropriate behavior. Yes. So um, you want to, um, so there was also a place under that where you could also mark each time they used the appropriate behavior that you were trying to teach them as well. So, and, and uh, I guess when I, when I worked in, the, when, when I was in the classroom, I was in the facility, my residential treatment facility, we used a school card. And a school card had uh, six or eight rules, which were quite a, a, a lot at that time. But, uh, you know, so we could have narrowed those down that have been simpler, but the, it was a very restrictive environment. So the kids understood what those were. And those school cards, I would, I would make a copy of them every day and I keep them in a file for each of the kids. And that way I could tell, you know, what days that they, they made their school points or did really well. And I could progress monitor that way. I think you could use that in a Google doc, I guess some way or so. I don't, and you techie folks know that stuff. I mean, I don't have any idea, uh, but you know, paper and pencil and write it down and I'm typing with one finger here. So that's the way it worked for me. But but we, I would keep track of those, and that way I could keep track of, you know, how closely they were coming to meeting that uh, progress or, or showing that progress or, or not. So, yeah, awesome job. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, Tiffany, that we haven't covered? Or you... um, our student star of the week, I, that's another thing that we use. It's been really successful, and, and we're getting a lot of parent buy-in with that. Uh, our seventh and eighth grade team has started doing a student of the week where it's each at the end of each week each classroom teacher chooses a student from seventh and a student from eighth grade that has excelled um, behavior academics just all around has excelled and we have a slideshow that we put that seventh and that eighth grader on and just a little blurb about them at the bottom of why they have achieved that status. And then as far as special education, we have slide two. Um, we, we don't call it anything re related to special ed to maintain confidentiality, but we, um, we then post that on our own seventh and eighth grade Facebook page. And parents are really buying into that. And they're seeing, you know, you know, why their student is excelling and, you know, they're getting that information from us that maybe they don't know about their child. Um, and then something myself and my um, co-special edu education teacher, we do just within our, with our kids is the start of the week. And we are trying to amp up motivation during virtual learning. Um, we've had a little bit of a trouble getting students to, line, to log in mm -hmm. to our Google Meet. And so we're trying to motivate them and something we're starting to have success with is a star of the week. Um, at the beginning of the week, we choose a random name and we have told the kids that we are watching for this person and if they participate um, throughout the week, they're gonna get points. So participation can be being in a Google Meet, mm -hmm. if we are in person or here, um, and then also just asking us a question. We have Google Hangouts that they can ask questions on, we have class tags that they can ask questions on and they can email us and we make sure they're aware of all these different modes of, of communication. And so that counts as participation if they get up with us. And so each time, each day that they get up with us or they're in a Google Meet or they're here in person, they get a point. 
and at the end of the week, um, I've got um, a, a, a spreadsheet that I've got it color coded. If they are showing up four or more times, they um, at the end of the, the box at the end turns green or pink if they've been there all five days, you know, participating. And if it's less, they're turning red. And that is an instant indicator to me that I need to find out what's going on with this student that I need to get up with them and get them involved. If they're pink at the end of the week, that means that they are going to qualify for a, a reward. Um, and that reward, again, is tied to their own needs and their own desires. Um, but also, their name gets put in a hat, and those pink people get drawn out, and one of them will get a double reward. And so they have really bought into that, and are in, are we're having more and more come into the Google Meets now. That's awesome. I'm I want to follow up on that later on in a few months and see how that's going with you because that's that's I love that. I like the way, uh, I mean, you know, of course, we want to reward our kids that are, and reinforce the kids and encourage those kids. But I like the way you said that if they showed up red, those are the ones that I need to check on. I need to see what's going on because, you know, in, in the situation that we're in, you don't know what kind of things that are going on in the household with the, with our right. students that we're working with. You don't know what kind of stressors they're facing or uh, uh, traumas exactly. that they may be, be experiencing. So. I really like that. I mean, you know, of course, I'm always encouraging and rewarding and reinforcing, but when you get those kids that are struggling, those are the ones that you as a teacher reach out for, and, and those kids will remember that. They'll remember that when it was a rough time. So Miss Miss Perkins asked about me, or, you know, Miss Chastity asked about me. They were concerned about me, so they, they'll remember that. So. I dropped that in the Google Classroom as well. Awesome. So anybody that wants to use that. Well, shoot, I don't have bad nothing then. I'm done. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Tiffany. We appreciate that so much. All right. So anything, anything else you'd like to add, Miss Tiffany, before we kind of wrap up? That, that's all I've got. Awesome. We thank you for being with us today. I appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Uh, just a couple of quick things uh, before I wrap up. Uh, you want to take us out? I'll let you end it. How's that sound? Oh, right. Since you're really? awesome. But, yeah, but just a couple. Really? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so this, just a couple of things. Uh, Miss Tiffany mentioned the, the uh, uh, Google Classroom, Google, uh, yeah, Classroom stuff. Uh, so we, we've put some forms and some uh, uh, behavior, some data collecting, collection tools in there. Uh, please check those out. Miss Tiffany's put a lot of stuff in there. If you folks have things that you want to add, please put those things in there as well. Uh, one thing that is in there is a decision uh, data collection method decision tree, and it looks at if you're looking at the frequency or rate of an event, then you're wanting to use the uh, re event recording, and this is for uh, uh, behaviors that have a definite beginning and ending time, and it's uh, like Miss Tiffany said, talking out, blurting out uh, some aggressive behaviors and being tardy to class. Uh, so you're looking at how long a behavior occurs. You want to use a duration recording. Uh, determine the length of behavior, how long it occurs and uh, each time. And uh, you look at continuous behaviors such as Ms. Chastity was being out of the seat, crying, off task, uh, behaviors such as looking around the room, chatting with peers, so forth and so on. Uh, if you want to look at permanent products, permanent products are those things that re uh, uh, result in a tangible item such as attendance, uh, office discipline referrals, uh, maybe a, a, a completed assignments, uh, you know, homework, things like that. Those are permanent products. Those are things that you can hold in your hand. So those are things that you review as well. Uh, another thing, if you want to look at uh, low frequency behaviors, you'd use partial interval. Uh, this is for behaviors that occur at a low rate. Uh, and if this behavior happens any part during the, the specified observation time, you would put a tally for that. Uh, such things as name calling, uh, inappropriate language, those would be low frequency behaviors. Also high frequency behaviors, uh, you use a whole interval, uh, behaviors of long duration, and it's, uh, for instance, student putting their head down. And all these, all these tools, these handouts, or their charts, graphs, whatever you want to call them, they're available in the Google Classroom. And so uh, use those uh, resources that are available to you. And like I said, we'll try to be adding things to that. And as you folks come across things, add those there as well. So Ms. Chastity, you want to take this away? Um, Bye. Uh, <laughs> Thank <can>. you. <laughs> Thank you all for having me. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, well, I guess I can. Uh, thanks for the. Um, <laughs> Throwing you under the bus. Uh -huh, that yeah, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> now, uh, just kidding, guys. So, thank you all for joining us this week. We appreciate you all coming. Thank you, Miss Tiffany. We just uh, your information is so valuable that I'm sure it's. I mean, it's a great idea. So, thank you for sharing those resources for those other teachers as well. Uh, I'm excited to hear about those. Um, those, those bingos and those activities that you did. So I definitely want to follow up on that. That was, I loved it. Um, so it, it not only the, does it progress monitor, but you build relationships with yeah. those students also, and it increases your self, the kid's self-esteem as well. So I, that's awesome. Um, like we uh, mentioned earlier, if you want to know more about what we talked about today, you can join the podcast Google Classroom. The class code is in the chat box, or if you are watching the recorded version, you can email the Mr. Doug Smith. Doug, Doug Smith at hazard.kyschools.us. Uh, our the show will also be on our website. Go to the holler.org under KVEC, the special education homepage, and you will see a button for podcasts. It will be listed under there. Um, we hope that you can join us next month. In November, we're going to be, or Doug will be discussing behavior strategies and his behavior podcast for November. Um, until next time, we'll holler at you, at you later. later. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.